Good morning, everyone. Six weeks will begin the 2024 football season. For me, 33 years. And uh, I'm still as excited as I was that first year that I was named the head football coach at Grand Valley State when I clearly had no idea what I was getting into. Um, but as we go into the 2024 season at LSU, we'll be celebrating 100 years of Tiger football. And we're excited about um, the things that we're going to be able to showcase this year. We feel like um, Tiger football has a great history and tradition. Uh, our stadium has been uh, refurbished to uh, take advantage of the pageantry of Tiger Stadium. Uh, and I think it's going to be an exciting football venue for everyone. It's been a challenging uh, season. A lot has gone on, as we know, with NIL and transfers and the college football playoffs is certainly upon us now and we're excited about that change that I think brings a new form of excitement and in particular to our new conference. I want to welcome Texas and Oklahoma into the SEC, uh, making this, uh, in my opinion, the premier college football conference in the country, deep and competitive, and certainly now um, an incredible challenge from top to bottom. And so when we talk about uh, playoffs, you're certainly going to be seasoned playing in this conference week in and week out. I brought three of our players here today uh, that I'm very proud of, and you'll get an opportunity to spend some time with today. Garrett Nussmeyer, who has uh, waited for his opportunity to be our starting quarterback. Uh, his persistence, um, his patience, his leadership. I'm excited to watch him lead our football team in 2024. Mason Taylor, our starting tight end since his freshman year when he caught the winning two-point conversion against Alabama has only been one of the most consistent players for our football team. He's been that both on and off the field. You know, it's hard sometimes when you're surrounded with three first-round draft picks to kind of get the notoriety and publicity. And I thought it was only fitting to bring him here today and, and, and get his due recognition for the kind of football player he's been for us over the past two years and uh, the expectations of him really being the kind of two-way player, both as a blocker and a pass receiver. And then Harold Perkins, uh, who has been a mainstay for us as a playmaker on defense, going into his third year, uh, I'm excited to watch what he's able to bring both at the inside linebacker position. I know Blake Baker is going to be able to move him around. But really why I brought him is, is I want you to see the man outside the jersey. Uh, he's one of our top student athletes. Uh, he's got an incredible personality. I think you're going to love getting a chance to meet Harold Perkins, the man, instead of just talking about Harold Perkins, the football player. So those are the players that, that you'll get a chance to meet today. The 2024 football team at LSU is one that, as we go into year three, has been built on accountability and trust. But it's been built knowing that we have to be able to play much more balanced football. We had, obviously, a record-setting offense last year but we didn't play to the standard that we needed to play at times defensively. And certainly that will be the goal this year was to play the kind of offense and defense and special teams that complement each other. So the challenge this year for us going into the offseason was to make the kind of strides 
to bring our defense up to the standard necessary to play for a championship. And we feel like we've done that. Obviously, we've got a little bit more work to do with our preseason, and our opener will certainly test us when we open up against USC in Las Vegas, a game that we're certainly excited about. So all of those things in 2024 have been exciting opportunities for our growth at LSU and can't wait to get started. Thank you, Coach. If you do have a question, raise your hand. Please give your name and affiliation. Uh, Grant, Dylan, and Dinah have the microphones, and so we'll go ahead and uh, get started uh, right here. Coach, right in the center section. Right here, right in front of us. Real sweet, Sooners on SI. Obviously, you guys lose Brian Thomas Jr. and Malik Neighbors to the draft. How do you plan on replacing that production? Well, I don't think you, you look towards one player. I, I think, you know, when, when we look at our football team in its totality, um, there'll be a number of players that we'll count on. I think we start with Kyron Lacey. Um, you know, he will be certainly a, a player that we lean on. Um, but I, I think at the wide receiver position, you know, uh, there's probably six to eight players um, that will get the opportunity to contribute uh, and, and make an impact. I think that that's what I like about our receiving core more than anything else is the depth. I think we've got speed on the perimeter. Uh, Chris Hilton showed that uh, in, in our bowl game against Wisconsin, his ability to track the ball down the field. I think we've got the ability to play inside out. Um, at the slot receiver position, I think we've got great depth there. Uh, we brought in uh, uh, C.J. Daniels, uh, I think will, will, will help us. Uh, Zion uh, will help us uh, transfer from Mississippi State. I think we brought in the right mix of players to give us the depth necessary uh, inside and out uh, to make up for that lost production. Coach, we'll go to the section in front of me, over to your left, about three quarters of the way back. Joe Coco with Inside of Texas. You had immediate success in the SEC during your first season. What would you think was one of the biggest keys into parlaying?